My life is getting too wild. I need to bring some sort of calm to it. About to lose your voice and screaming, don't do it. <laughs> oh, man. Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and We're back. Just finished up getting the lift set up. And the second lift set up, everything wired up, all the hydraulic hoses ran. I'll show you all a little bit of that after we get done with the intro. It is Sunday right now. This is about 11 o'clock. I've been here since about 7.30. Time to bounce, go home and spend some more time with the family. Today's video, when fights don't end the way we thought they were going to end. When you go in just knowing what you're about to do and, uh, well, damn. Where they do that at? What happened? You was doing all it. Oh, man. How you going to fix that? That's your teeth, man. I've seen a lot of dudes that let the mouths write checks that you know the saying that I can't cash it's a whole lot of them guys guys swear to god they're tough we can do a hundred part series on this because most of the guys that do all the loud mouthing all the barking all the talking really ain't gonna do a whole lot no it's that dude that just tells you all right show me that you better be worried about. The guy that's constantly making threats and saying what he's gonna do and talking, 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 talking. He's usually trying to psych you out. He's usually trying to scare you because he don't want to fight. He's trying to back you into a corner with his wordplay and win the war before it's even started. But anybody that's confident in themselves, know what they're capable of doing, knows that when it comes down to the get down, what they're gonna do, I'm not gonna do a whole lot of talking. I ain't got to say much, man. You know, just we're going to do what we do when we see each other. Them guys that talk, usually it's just talk. Be careful of the man that's got a few words. Because he's usually got other things planned for you. When the fight doesn't go your way, when things don't go as planned, picking on somebody in prison and getting your ass whooped happens a lot. You see one guy that you automatically assume or expect is going to do this or that. And then when it don't happen, well, if you've been down long enough, you're not really shocked. Because you've seen it time and time again. Tough for nothing. Big for nothing. You ever heard of saying, I he's big, but that shit's big for nothing. There's a whole lot of guys that are big for nothing. There's a difference between being big and being big. Being fat don't make you big. Being tall and fat don't make you big. I know guys that are five foot six that are big. And they're big because of what's in here not what's out here never judge a man based on the size or how he looks that right there might be your number one mistake but being locked up and when fights don't go the way everybody thought they were gonna go <laughs> i need to bring some sort of calm to it you know how to see me you know how to live it so let's relive it it's probably about to start pouring down it has rained non-stop for the last few days here in VA. It's messed my vacation up, but it allows me to be at home with the kids and in the house, and that's what I love doing. You know, it's crazy, and this is a fact, and sitting at home this week and doing nothing, you're going to ask me, how, how, how? I actually made more money than I would have if I was at work. That's when you know you've put your money in the right places and that your investments are coming full circle. Makes me question if I should continue to work. But thinking, you know, I think a lot because I'm a thinker. I'm smart. I know that in this lifetime, you have to work. Nothing is promised. What's going on today could be the complete opposite tomorrow. So until you're in a position where you can say, I, I ain't got to work no more, you continue to work. I'm not in that position. Um, I'm in a good position, but I'm not in that position. But let me show y'all some quick footage of the next step in my life. I've talked about these tow trucks, automotive repair, and everything that's coming with it, and it is 100% going down. I'm not a guy that talks about something and don't do it. If I talk about it, it's coming. It may take some time, but it's coming. I'm currently working on getting the Class A license, CDLs, all the things I need to drive those big trucks. Currently working on getting enrolled in these courses, these classes, and I have some friends that you know, own tow truck companies, tow trucks, so that's gonna play into my favor, but it's all in the making right now. So let's catch this quick clip of what my day consisted of. Hi, it's hot, but 
operation, get the jacks into place, the lifts into place it is complete. Let me show y'all. Boom. And there's our control. That thing is hooked up. Then we have the second lift that I was talking about, the post lift right here. And then you've got the roll on lift or we'll drive on. It's in the air right now. I just finished finished checking all the hoses, making sure there was no leaks, getting everything wired up, 220, 30 amp. We're good to go, man. This part of the process is now done. Now we start transitioning, moving out construction materials and moving in tools. Away with the saws and with the grinders. Out with the this and with that. Out with the old and with the new, man. On to the next stage of my life, my career, and what it is I'm going to do with myself. I'm one of those people, I believe that if what you're doing you don't enjoy, you need to figure something out. If you don't love what you're doing, then you won't. It'll show. And I've lost just the drive for doing the construction, so it's time to do something different. And that's what this is. This is something different. This is the next phase of Jay Williams' listed life. That's a beautiful thing. Those two lifts right there are going to make a whole lot of money. I've got guys on standby, good guys, good men, ready to start work, ready to start turning wrenches, ready to get behind the wheels of them trucks and get these cars and these trucks and whatever it may be hauled, moved away. We're going to do out-of-state towing. What happens if your car breaks down in Texas and you live in New York? How the hell are you going to get your car home? A lot of guys stress about that. Give us a call. Head out to Texas, scoop it up and get it back to New York for you or local. And then you got the one at time where everybody seems to be stuck in the ditch. Somebody's got to come get you out. Or your junk broke down on the side road at 3 o'clock in the morning. Don't nobody want to come. But we're on the way. There's a million different ways to make money in this lifetime. And the only people that won't agree with that are the people that have no hustle in them or really don't know how to make money. That is not me. Let's get into today's video. When I first moved to Richmond, we had this kid in my neighborhood that was a bully. I didn't grow up around there, so I didn't know him like that, but I'm the new kid coming into the neighborhood. It didn't take me long for me and this kid to get into it. At the time, you gotta remember, I'm 12, 13 years old. I'm not a big kid, but I didn't come from Mayberry. I'm not a scary kid either. Where I come from, we, we fight. That's just what we did as kids, even with as friends. We fought each other. We called it a friendly fade. You had to see if everything that kid was talking about was real. You had to test the waters. I don't believe you. You need more people. So coming to VA and coming to Richmond, I thought it was going to be sweet. Richmond's nothing sweet about it. Richmond's hype. Richmond's live. Richmond is turned up. Kids fight out here. We're coming to this new neighborhood. This kid seeing a new opportunity to fight with somebody. This new kid in the neighborhood wanted to establish his dominance. Tried it with me and we knocked up. I'm not going to say I beat the kid up, but I didn't run. I fought. He knew I wasn't somebody that was just going to lay down and he could pick on like he did the other kids. So that was a one-shot, one-time deal. And from there, we weren't cool. We weren't going to never be cool. I don't like bullies. I don't like dudes that try to throw their sides around or pick on people they feel that they can because they're bigger than them or because that kid's quiet. I don't like them type of dudes. So moving forward and like this dude had his little clique of flunkies. Yeah, I called y'all flunkies. Y'all are flunkies. That he hung out with and I had my squad. You get later into my teen years, this dude's done moved off. Lives in another neighborhood now. Still comes out there, drives out there. Kicks with his own boys, but he ain't welcome when we kick it at. Our neighborhood at times was divided. You know, we got a whole bunch of people from the same neighborhood, but we kind of click up. You know, I'm cool with them. They're cool with me, but them dudes over there, not so much, man. We don't rock with y'all like that. It's weird how when you go to jail, if you're from the same neighborhood, guys automatically feel like everything is forgiven. Oh man, we didn't get along in the streets, all right, though. We locked up now. You know the same people I know. We went to the same school and we used to walk down the same streets. We used to sit on the same stoops and drink 40s and smoke blunts with homeboys now. No, we're not. We ain't like each other on the streets. We locked up, I still don't like you. With this dude in particular, on the streets, I guess you would try to, he could try to say that 
he got money, but he didn't really get money. This dude, everything he had was low budget, from his car to, you know, he's the type to wear black Air Force Ones. Like in the middle of summertime, when everybody else has got the new Air Force Ones that just dropped, he's got on the black, fresh Air Force Ones thinking he's doing something. Not knowing that we know them cost a, a third of what our Air Force Ones cost, right? Well, I get into the jail and I thought I recognized this dude, but many years have passed. And the last time I had seen him, the good sized dude. I see this frail body, skinny dude with his face sunk in, patches of hair missing, looking like a dog with mange. And he's over there at the cooler, and they used to bring this water cooler in the morning and put coffee in it. Nastiest coffee you could ever imagine. Well, for the indigent guys, indigent being the broke ones, the guys with no money, the, did, the scragglers, the can't get rights, the vagabonds, the homeless version of an inmate, they would go up there with the potato chip bag and fill that bag up with coffee. And all day long, they would pour that coffee, cold ass coffee, out of that bag and into that little coffee cup and walk around drinking his coffee. That's how I noticed dude. He was up there at the cooler filling his bag up with coffee. Sitting out there talking to a couple of dudes. Mind you now, I've been in the jail better part of maybe a week and a half, two weeks, and I just got moved over to this this pod, which was 5D in Riverside. I'm sitting at the table talking to some of the dudes I know, a couple of dudes from Richmond, a couple of dudes from Petersburg, just shooting the bullshit, chopping it up, doing what we do past the time. I think we were playing dominoes. And he walks up, hey, what's up, man? I look up at him, hey, that's the dude from the water cooler. I can't pinpoint where I know him from, but the face looks very familiar. What's up with you? Damn, though, y'all, you know what I mean? Like, y'all know me or something. Do I know you? My name is such and such. Such and such what? He tells me his last name. I'm like, oh, shit. As I'm looking at him, I wasn't no junkie on the streets. I'm healthy. I didn't come in all wore down and ragged out and you know rode hard and put away wet like this dude i still had some size on me was a bouncer right before i locked up wasn't no small dude i'm looking at him like all right what's up what's up would you mind how you been what you locked up for i look at him for a second he continues to talk i don't make much small talk with him he gets the you know the, the clue of what's going on all right then and walks off i'll talk to you home why robert you on the street away from my table man I'm standing there trying to talk to me this guy goes around asking everybody for stuff he is what I told you exactly he's indigent so he's always bumming stuff hey man you got a stamp man can I get a soup you got a shot of coffee he's one of them dudes comes to my cell one day and he's standing there trying to talk to my cellmate which at the time was Jimmy Yates another he's another whole case and I told Jimmy, I said, yo, I don't really get right in front of dude. I said, yo, I don't really rock with dude like that, man. If, uh, you know, you want to kick it with dude, man, carry that shit on out somewhere. And I don't want that dude to sell. Dude looks at me funny, and Jimmy ain't the type that's going to say anything. It's Jimmy, I eventually had did put hands on Jimmy. And Jimmy's like, all right, Jake, hops off the bunk. Come on, man. Rolls out there and gets to talking to dude. Short time later, he comes in the cell. Got two coffee cups, his cup and dude's cup. Takes a spoon in his bag, gets him a shot of coffee, and gets dude a shot of coffee. I'm shaking my head. Bro, you already ain't got much and now. You splitting it with this bum. We lock in and now. He's like, man, why you don't like dude? Dude's all right. That's when dude's a bitch. What you mean he's a bitch? I said, I told him the whole situation when I first came to VA and me and dude rumbling and he was a bully and he used to like to try to pick on dudes and I don't like no bullies. I said, he wouldn't try that shit with me. I said, you know, I feel for real, for real. I've always felt some type of way about what happened when I was, a, you know, a young, a young dude, man. Like, Tried to apply pressure, but as I got older, I'll break every bone in that boy's body, man. I said, even then, when he was twice my size, he couldn't whoop me. He was like, well, dude, I ain't trying to, man. Dude, don't say nothing but good stuff about you. Say you this, you that, yeah, whatever, man. I'm sure he's going to say that, right? As I told you, this dude continues to borrow stuff, borrow stuff, borrow stuff, borrow stuff from people all the time. And they used to come in the commissary, and the commissary would come in our pod, and they'd wheel these carts in, and they had these big brown bags, like a big shopping bag with your name written on it and your state number. They would lock everybody down, and then they would, when they pulled your bag, they would tell the officer the name. The officer would look up your name, look up your cell number, which was usually written right on the bag, and they would pop your door. Williams, come to the front of the commissary. You come up there, they read out your list. Boom. You do commissary. You make your commissary. This guy never went to commissary. Not there, not ever, never, ever did he go to commissary. I guess his people on the streets didn't like him much either because of who he was as a person.
You know, it's funny how quick the tables can turn. How somebody that was once, I guess you can say somebody, can quickly become nobody. And that's what had happened with this dude. At one point, he was somebody, or at least he thought he was somebody. I never felt like he was anybody. But because he had bullied people, and I guess some people respect fear. We know that to be a fact. He felt like he was somebody. You get in the jail. Sorry, homeboy, none of that shit matters here. Plus, you look like something off Lord of the Rings now, like somebody just sucked all the life out your body. He gets on the phone every once in a blue moon, and usually he would trade a trade to somebody or, hey, man, if you make a phone call for me, I'll give you my lunch and my breakfast tray. He would pull some type of maneuver to be able to get on the phone. Somebody tells him they're going to send him some money. I don't know who it was, but somebody tells him they're going to send him some money. Understand this. Don't you ever get locked up and bank on money you ain't got yet. Just because they said it, they might forget. They might have been bullshitting you. They might not have no intent on sending you money. They might just say it to shut you up. So after he gets told he's getting some money, he goes around and starts telling people, hey, man, I got some money on the way. Let me borrow this. Let me borrow that. Let me borrow this. Meanwhile, I'm still not talking to this dude. I don't mess with you. Stay away from me, right? You would get a money slip once your money showed up. When they come around and do mail, they would pass out these little yellow pieces of paper, and a yellow piece of paper will let you know that, all right, somebody sent you some money. Boom, I got money. I can go to commissary. As we're approaching time to put in our commissary slips, a little bubble paper, you bubble in to get your items, you drop it in the box, they come pick it up. You got money, they fill your order. Every day they pass out mail, and every day the guards don't stop at his cell. Not once have they stopped at his cell. So now he's borrowed all this stuff from all these different dudes, and he ain't got no money slip. The clock is ticking. Closer and closer to the day the money's got to be there. But you get nothing. His money don't hit. He's borrowed a bunch of stuff from a bunch of different people. And let me make this clear. Don't nobody care about your excuses. Don't nobody pay, care about your grandma. Don't nobody care about her dialysis, her, her need for pills, what she's got going on in life. Dudes will whoop your ass behind them soups and them honey buns and everything they got going on. They could care less about what you got going on. He starts going to dudes and letting them know, man, I don't know if that money's going to be here in time, but I mean, I got you once it gets it. Dudes don't want to hear that. You borrowed it, you pay it back, and you get your ass whooped. Money doesn't hit. Everybody puts their slips in. He drops it just praying that hopefully the money did show. They just forgot to give me my money receipt. Store day comes around. Bag by bag, they pass out commissary. They get to the very bottom of the basket his name never gets called he never goes up there and gets a bag meanwhile he owes all types of dudes money real bullies dudes that bully bullies dudes that really do that not guys that prey on people half their size or use that little squad to run down on people nah dudes that'll beat your ass comes up to my cell talking to Jimmy I told Jimmy before I said like I told him last time I had to do it at the cell man Hey, Jimmy, man, you, can, I, can I holler at you real quick? I look at Jimmy. Jimmy, yeah, man, I got you. He hops off the bunk, and they walk out in the pod, and he comes back. He's like, man. I said, what's up? He's like, man, them boys going to beat his ass. Who? A couple different people, man. He owes them money. What you telling me for? You think maybe? No. Don't even. I know you ain't about to ask me to help get that dude out of debt. I don't give a shit who does what to him. Now, you shouldn't either. Man, I can't let him do him like that. He's all right. No, he's not all right, man. He's a piece of shit. I know him from the streets. He's not all right. Well, I'm going to try to get him out of a jam, man. Do what you do. But once he tells Jimmy Yates how much he owes, Jimmy can't. This man is over $100 deep. You know what I mean? He's been buying little roll-ups with stuff he's got store box, little cigarettes from guys, and eating good, and eating up all the honey buns, the snicker bars, the zoom zooms, the wham whams, thinking his money's going to come in. Jimmy tells him, Bro, I got $75. I thought you might need like 20, 30 bucks. I can't. $150, man. You hit. Dude walks up to me, man. I'm trying to think if I was talking to Danny, who I was talking to. But I, was I think I was talking to the homeboy X before I found out X was gay. Comes up and he's like, look, man, I know you don't, you know what I mean? You don't rock with me, man. We ain't really kicking like that in the streets. 
I just wanted to apologize for the shit that happened way back in the day. No, you don't. You're trying to find a way to get your foot in the door because you know I'm straight when it comes to money. And I'm straight with them dudes that want to beat you up. I don't say much. I just look at it. Where you going with this, man? I need you, bro. We're from the same neighborhood. Like, you got to let that stuff go, man. Like, we're from the same neighborhood. You got to look out on the street. I don't got to do shit. And I'm not going to do shit. I said, oh, yeah, well, what's going on? I owe dudes money, man. And if I don't pay them, then you already know what it is. What, they going to beat your ass? They're going to do you like you used to try to do other dudes? Well, we're from the same neighborhood, so I'm thinking that, you know, we're from the same area, man. Like, this home team right here. Hey, look, man, I'm, I'm going to keep it straight with you. I'm not even going to be around the bush or make it seem like it's something that it's not. I don't mess with you, man. I didn't mess with you then. I don't mess with you now. We didn't kick it on the streets. You tried to act like somebody when you was when I was young and you was bigger than me. And, you know what I mean? You used to try to push your weight around on my homeboys and them. Nah. Could I go holler at them dudes and make them leave you alone? Yeah. Could I clear your debt for you if I wanted to? Yeah. Am I going to? Nah. So he comes and has this conversation with me while everybody else is still in the midst of paying people what they owe. Every It's like I'd say 70% of the people in that pod or in jail in general owe somebody something on store day. Most guys are borrowing because they run short or they didn't go to the store last week or they ran through their stuff or they eat it up with everybody and run out of stuff so they go borrow. Dudes are still making moves. They're still hitting switches here and there, clearing their debts. This dude's walking around with the, the sad puppy dog face. Dude from Petersburg approaches him in the middle park. They know he didn't go to the store, but they got to, before you don't, you don't just attack somebody. You go, hey, what's some of that money you owe me? Dude approaches him and tries to get him to come to sell. And that's when he shows his true colors. He's forgotten now that you ain't who you used to be, homeboy. You look terrible, like. You look like if crack smoked crack. He gets loud with this dude in the middle of the pod. Man, y'all got to look. I've been quiet. I ain't been saying nothing. I'll be around. I don't be bothering nobody. But straight up, y'all don't want me to start acting crazy in here. Running his mouth. Telling dude, man, the last thing y'all want to do is try to mess with me. I told you I'd get you your money, but I ain't got it right now. These people messed up. He's trying to lie and say they messed up. When in reality, he didn't get no money. Nobody sent him no money. They pulled the wool over his eyes. They hit him with the okie doke. The... 52 fake out. Nobody sent you no money. But I'm telling y'all, y'all ain't gonna be pushing up on me, acting like y'all gonna do something to me. I can fight too. He's making all this noise in front of everybody. The guard up at the little desk up there sees it and it's, she's just sitting there kind of not doing much. She didn't do much. Just observing what's going on. And then if a fight takes place, then she'll do her job and radio for other officers, right? So dude tells him, when he's not far from us, maybe 15, 20 feet. He's about four tables over arguing with this dude from Petersburg. Dude tells him, look, man, all that talking. Come in the cell. Nah, 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 we ain't going in there. You can try to jump with your homeboys. You can come to my cell. You can come to my cell. You ain't said nothing, then let's go to your cell. Dude goes up to his cell, puts his shoes on, and standing in his doorway. What he's doing is he's standing in his doorway so the officer can see him. He feels like if he can keep eye contact with the officer and the officer can see him at all times, that he's safe. But once he's out of her eyesight, somebody can slide up in there and, and beat him up. I see the dude from Petersburg go over to his cell, lace up. He's standing in his doorway looking up at, at dude. He's got his shoes on. He's got his shoes on. The officer starts talking to somebody else. Dude slides up there. Dude tries to hurry up and shut the door real quick. Another dude that lives himself a couple doors down grabs the door so he can't shut the door. And the Peter boy, Petersburg boy slides up in there. Ooh. Put hands on him. You hear the scoot, 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 pop, 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 pop. Them up there rumbling. Petersburg boy gets his thing off. A couple minutes later, it comes out, look, poked his head up the door. And it was actually one of his homeboys that ran the distraction and got the guard's attention so he could go do what he was doing. Dudes are making noise, oh, oh, doing all this other stuff to, so she can't hear what's going on in the cell. Petersburg boy, he dust his ass off, comes on out there. I'm not going to lie. Why lie? I was enjoying it. I'm loving every bit of it. Watching the bully get his ass beat. Instead, I here made a scene in front of everybody. And you just got whooped by a dude half your size. But Petersburg boys know how to fight. Now, don't get it twisted. They get down. You better ask about them. And they, they do them things out there in the streets. This ain't the only dude he's, he owes money. Just because he got his ass whooped by him don't mean that he don't still got to answer to all these other dudes he's borrowed stuff from. All these other dudes that are expecting payment. Dude, Petersburg goes to tell us, you know, a couple of the other dudes because they're close-knit. They all talk. 
dude ain't got no money, man. Y'all better figure out what y'all gonna do. I done beat his ass and let him know that I'm taking his breakfast trays until I get straight, straight like that. Every trade that comes on, I'm walking up, he's either gonna give it to me or I'm gonna go take it. Now dude comes out the cell, he's all lumped up. Big ass knot on the side of his eye, looking like somebody elbowed him and John claude Van Damme him or Kimbo sliced him. And this big ass goose egg on top of his eye. Comes out, sits down in the day room. Another scare tactic. Not trying to go in that cell because dudes are held the door on him so he couldn't shut the dude out so he didn't get time to go to the officer. He can't go to the officer and tell her he fears for his life. There's only one officer here, and if you do it, everybody sees you, everybody knows. You're gonna go to the hole, and there's a very good chance you're gonna come out the hole and come back in here, still owe these dudes, but now you're a rat. It's gonna be that much worse. He's sitting in that chair, and another dude comes behind him and says, hey, man, what's up? You plan on uh coming over here and uh, hollering at me about the money you owe me? Look, man, I know you know I just got to fighting with such and such for Petersburg, man. I ain't got the money and dude mushes his face. He's in the middle of talking and dude just shoves his face. Once again, why lie? I'm enjoying what's going on. Better have my money, I'm gonna beat your ass, right? Dude's sitting there looking like a little scared sheep. This is the bully, the guy in the neighborhood that used to try to pick on everybody. The guy that tried to pick on me when I moved around there that I had to fight with. That I hadn't even done anything to him. This was all over a football we had to fight over. He tried to take the football during the little backyard football game we was playing, and that's why me and him initially got to fight. He tried to take the football and leave, and, hey, give me the ball back. He wouldn't give me the ball back. I ran up, and we got into it. Now he gets up after he gets his face mushed, and he goes back up there, and he's standing in his door, and you can see... The fear has set in on him. These dudes are gonna do something to this guy behind ramen noodles and Dr. Peppers and Pepsis and moon pies and little convenience store food. That stuff is, it's currency in jail. And a lot of times it's not even about the commissary. It's about your word. It's about the fact that if you don't pay it back, it sends a message to everybody else that I ain't gotta pay you back because he ain't pay you back. He's standing in the door, and I start looking around. I see a couple of the dudes he owes outside of the one that beat him up, the one that mushed his face. The other dudes are standing there talking about themselves, figuring out what they're going to do. You can't apply too much pressure because then he'll leave. But if he ain't going to get no money and you're not going to get paid, then it don't matter if he leaves. What you need to do is whoop his ass so that regardless of what happens, everybody else knows you're not playing about yours. I see these other dudes spread off now and they done put their shoes on and they come back out and they gathered up again. They're gonna go up there and just run bank game on him and just stomp him out and beat him up. I look up at him and I see him coming down the staircase. He's trying to make his way over to the officer. I fear for my life. I owe people money. I'll tell y'all whatever y'all need to know. Six nine status, get me up out of here. It's all bad. He's coming down the staircase and as he gets about maybe four or five steps from the bottom, you can reach through the staircase. You can stand under the staircase where dudes will congregate. It's just about four, it's about four or five steps from coming down the bottom. Dude reaches through the stairs and grabs his leg and pulls him. And he falls. Boom! Down the staircase. Dudes run up on him and just commence to putting the one twos on him. Putting fists on him. Beating him up right in front of the officer. The officer, hey, y'all stop that. Y'all stop that. Distraction ain't no good no more. He done fell down the staircase, which made a whole bunch of noise. Mind you now, it wasn't but four or five steps he fell. But they're metal steps, so... It hurts. I don't care if you hit your elbow, your chin, your face. Falling on the metal stairs hurts whatever you come in contact with. And these dudes just went ahead and beat him up. But the thing is, they had a whole bunch of dudes standing over toward the staircase that when he come down, he was going to have to try to part the seas and walk through. So he knew it was bad, but this is the only way to come down the staircase. They beat him up. The officer radios, you know, for help. She can't move by herself. She's got to have backup. She didn't even get up out of her chair. I think she yeah, might, might have stood up to look. But there's so many dudes standing there, she can't see who the aggressors are. She can't see who's actually assaulting them. She just sees maybe 15, 20 guys standing there. They're all blocking the beat down this boy's taking. I'm sitting out at the table with the dominoes spread out, sitting there eating my little whatever I had made up, just watching these dudes beat him up. By the time the other officer comes in, the dudes that beat him up have done spun out. They have no, you know, no idea who just beat him up. Well, I seen him, 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 and... So they go get the guys that the officer did see. They do what's called a hand check. Check their hands. Ain't no damage on their hands. They have no signs of nothing. The camera and the pod didn't work. They beat the dude up. Guards come to him. Who beat you up? Dude's just standing there staring out the door. They got him in the day room. He's sitting on the bench. And guys are standing at the door just praying. 
Go ahead and say something. We know people all throughout this jail, Mr. Bully. Mr. Guy that used to pick on people on the streets. You ain't so tough now, are you? Running your mouth talking about what you was going to do. Borrowing money. Thinking because you know people in the streets that you're safe in here. You know what he did? Told on them dudes. Right in front of them. Man, it was the dude in cell such and such. And the dude in such and such. And the dude in such and such. Told on these boys. So then they take him. Move him to the hole for fear of his life. They then take the guys that beat him up and put him in the same hole so that they can yell down to his cell. Damn, it's like that. You told on us. We'll beat the shit out of you when we get up out of here. About a month goes by and the guys they took out of there, a couple of them return back into the pod. Talk about the threats they made to him. How he was all tough behind the door. And when they get him, they was going to beat his ass. They start sending kites to different pods. Trying to figure out Where'd he go? He just can't be in a hole no more. Where did he come out to? What part of the jail is he in? No matter what part of the jail you go to, somebody's going to slide a kite. You're going to get touched. You owe that money over here? My homeboy's over there going to come collect, and they're going to beat your ass for telling on me. Another dude comes out the whole night. Three, four months have passed now. We still can't figure out where this dude is in the jail. He's hiding. He's laying low. Like, what the hell? Why? How can't we find this dude? Dude comes out the hole and comes in our pod, and dudes get to talk about it. They're like, oh no, that dude was still in the hole. What you mean he's still in the hole? He should have been out 30 days. Oh no, he's refusing to come out the hole. Said he fears for his life. And that if he goes back in the general population, dudes are gonna do something bad to him. My oh my, how the tables turn. How you went from being the bully in the neighborhood. How you had made a name for yourself on the streets for picking on people. You were so tough. When didn't nobody want to fight. But when you got in there around real savages, real gangsters, real killers, your true colors showed. That's what a bully does. He picks on people he feels like he can beat. He picks and chooses his battle. To a man that can say he's never lost a fight, there are some men that are built like that. But those men are very few. If you've never lost a fight nine times out of ten, You've picked and chose the battles you wanted to fight. Oh, no. Nah. I ain't messing with him. Hell, no. Nah. Break all my teeth out. I'm going to go pick on him. It was a humbling experience. It was something, and even though I shouldn't say I enjoy seeing anybody get hurt, I thought back to guys I'd seen him bully in my neighborhood, in the school, throughout life. But once he got into jail, where you weren't dealing with kids no more, where guys wanted to fight, all that big for nothing that you used to be couldn't save you no more. You know, it's crazy, man. Life is a crazy thing when you look back on somebody you knew when you were younger and then you see that guy grow up. There's guys I drive by every day that I see holding a sign that says homeless, please help that I remember going to high school with, that I knew as a teenager and as a young man that are now grown men. This guy was once somebody that some dudes feared in the streets. He could do that out in the world, but once he stepped into an environment where he was no longer an alpha male, where he went from being the predator to prey, his true color showed. He went on to become a junkie, a drug addict, died of an overdose. Like I said, life is crazy. Who would have ever known when I first got here and I got into it with this dude over a damn football, ended up fighting with him. We couldn't be cool after that. I was just one of those guys that if I did not like you for who you were, there was nothing you could do moving forward to make me like you. I didn't know when I was just a kid that I would end up in jail with this guy one day and that he would try to be friends with me. He didn't know that when he picked that fight with me when we were kids that I would grow up and be somebody that he would one day need him. You don't go around making enemies because you never know when the guy you're causing problems with might be the same guy you need help from. I just so happened to become the guy that could have saved him from getting what he got. But after everything he did in life, all the pain he caused others, the fear he inflicted on others. Nah, he didn't deserve that. 
He deserved exactly what he got in that jail. This is what happens when being a bully goes wrong. When you think you're a bully and then you show up and realize ain't nobody in here you can pick on. Especially after you done smoked all your muscles away. You done smoked all your size away. Boys been in here doing push-ups and pull-ups for the last year, the last 18 months. They are war ready, chiseled up, hard body. And you come in looking like a walking skeleton wearing some skin. <laughs> now I don't wish bad on nobody. But karma's a bitch. What goes around always comes right back around. Well, anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed today's story. It is Sunday. It's starting to rain again. It's about to pour down. I'm back at home. I'm going to go ahead and play some PlayStation with my little man. Eat a bowl of cereal. Uh, mess around on the laptop. Do what I do. And enjoy my day. Hope y'all have a great Sunday. Have a great week. We'll get back into these videos in a couple days. Anyways, these jails, institutions, facilities, these streets. They're all just crazier world inside of an already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are oh, you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones. And the awesome real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do. Salute. Don't be a bully. Don't pick on people. What goes around comes around. You never know when the guy you turn into an enemy, you just may need as a friend.